Okay, Eurocoins video on Sunday, the 24th of November, 2024. Just gone 4.59 a.m. Chicago time. Do hope you are doing well. So it's the weekend and time for another weekend futures market recap. We'll go through 15 of the largest futures markets and I'll show you what I'm seeing on my charts. Recording this video a little bit late on Sunday. Hopefully I'll be able to get it out in the next hour or so, so it's on time. And I hope I don't talk too quickly during this video as I rush to uh, get it out. We're going to go through the e-mini charts first, daily all the way down to the 15-minute and the tick bar charts. And then we'll go through the futures markets with the forex markets first. Not much to say about the high-level charts on the e-mini. We were expecting a bounce after last weekend's uh, video, but I said wait, wait, wait until we get all the right conditions for that bounce. We got that bounce, but it was different from what I expected. And I'll show you that on the 15 and the 13,500 tip bar charts. So here we go. The background's in red. We're in an uptrend. We've got a nice reading 2.1 million on better momentum, which is good. We need to see that go over four to get an exhaustion read. We need to see a blue professional up bars before this uptrend is all over. So it's all good. We're moving ahead. We're going to crack through 6,000 most likely this week. And we've also got a seasonal pattern lining up. We've got Thanksgiving on Thursday and the beginning of the seasonal pattern pattern starts the beginning of this week. We always get a bullish push into holidays and the Thanksgiving long weekend. It pushes forward to I think about the 10th of December in terms of that bullishness. So that's what I'm expecting over the next uh, week and a half or so. Going down to the 135 minute chart here. Again, background on the left hand side is in red. We're in an uptrend. The trailing stop is miles away at 5,200. A neutral reading, negative 5,000 on better momentum here. No amateur bars, no blue professional bars, nothing much in terms of the 135 minute chart. We got caught with cyclical support there. On the daily chart, we didn't go down and make that cyclical cross. It just came in on the 135 minute chart and that was enough to cause this little bit of a bounce. 45 minute chart. Here you can see the weakness that we had last week. We tested back down into this region, 5,880. And the blue professional bars down here, we had a bullish divergence pattern right on the zero line. So we'd expect to see a flush pattern, which we're going to get in the next couple of days with it when this triggers uh, and confirms that. But they're not really in the right spots. This is selling down. This is bottoming. This flush pattern is going to come in on this rise Thursday into Friday. So it's not a classic bottoming pattern, but you will see that in the next uh, couple of charts on the uh, tip bar chart in a second. And so the weakness that we had here under resistance on the highest time frame, we're coming back into that level. It'll be interesting to see what happens at that point because we're going to get a triple pattern when we've overshot resistance on this lowest time frame. We're going to possibly be caught by resistance on the next highest time frame. And we've got this cyclical resistance sitting up at uh, 6,035. So that'll be super important. And we've got this weakness at the moment on the 45 minute chart in terms of better momentum. So is that going to cause some problems that will have a little bit of a sell off from there? It's possible. So just wait and see on that. 15 minute chart, there's all the big pro bars coming in at the end of last week. We test uh, into that region. Blue professional bars step in here and then they buy this dip and they keep it going here. Those are nice signs of strength on uh, both time frames coming in here on the 15 minute chart. Better pro am and better sine wave. Here we go on the 13,500 tip bar chart, which was more interesting to understand what was happening. The weakness that we had last week, we tested into these lows. And we had a Rambo pattern down here. Blue professional bars were getting short at this point. We pushed into those lows again. And we had a nice little pattern, exhaustion sell, bullish divergence right by the zero line. And there was the flush pattern that came in together. So that was really nice to just catch lows. But down here, all that we had was amateur down bars, amateur down bars, testing amateur down bars, and again, more amateur down bars at this point here. So they were getting wrong footed. We went the other way. We had this little bit of weakness Thursday into Friday. And I think that was the Russian missile news because we had the euro sold off super hard into that. And I think that's what happened there. Blue professional down bars caught that. And we stair stepped the trade up and we're looking as if this is just sitting under here, this 5991, 6000 level. We've got all these touches happening here. Bang, bang, bang. The market doesn't usually reverse at that point. That looks more like a wedge waiting to break out above uh, the 6,000 level. Keep going there. 
if it had been one or two pushes or we'd had a little bit of a push and caused an exhaustion pattern or blue professional uh, up bars and immediately got rejected, um, I would say watch for this level to be broken on the way down. But this looks like it's wedging up to uh, get through 6,000. And we've got that seasonal pattern happening as well. So uh, I think that looks pretty good for a break this week. We've got everything going on here in terms of better sine wave. Yes, we've had a little pullback to end of trend pattern there but we're above resistance on the intermediate and the highest time frame so these most likely uh, have to go look for a pullback to end of trend at least on the intermediate time frame. So I think all of that is constructive for getting through 6,000 this week but the 45 minute chart here where we're sitting under this resistance let's see uh, if we get a triple print somewhere between where we are and 6,035 to see if that's an area where we just have another dip down into this before breaking back through those highs. So that's what I'm seeing on the e-mini charts. Let's have a look at the tip bar charts. So as usual, we've got the four charts set up with the two time frames, the 500 and the 1500 tip bar chart for the case of the uh, euro. And we've got better pro and better momentum on one chart and better sine wave on the second. Always say look for this top left chart. This is better pro am on the highest time frame for clues as to direction and professional activity. And here's the sell-off that we had. We had a nasty little break here, 105. I caught that break and then immediately reversed and went the other way, which was nice. But that was the missile news uh, out of uh, Russia, Ukraine that sent that market down, the euro market down. And yes, we've had exhaustion sell and bullish divergence, amateur down bars there, but no blue professional bars at those lows. We could have a little bit of a bounce, but we need to come back in to test those levels to really check that that low is in. We're at three and a half down there. Pull back to end of trend on the intermediate time frame here on the 1500 tip bar chart. But it's not enough to bottom this. We need to see the blue professional bars come in. The trailing stop is still 105, quite a long way away from the activity so far. So that's Euro chart. British pound, same thing, sold off on the same news. Here we've got blue professional bars coming at 125, but no exhaustion sell patterns down here. So British pound's still got to do some work. Aussie dollar. Aussie dollar didn't get sold down quite so hard, but here this is interesting. We've got blue professional down bars into the lows here. Exhaustion sell, bullish divergence come in. This 64.8 level looks like it's interesting. Let's see if we uh, can build there. No, we've still got some time here on better sine waves. Still got signs of weakness going on in this highest time frame here. So this has got to come down. We've got to find support on the highest time frame. So not time yet for the Aussie. Japanese yen. Japanese yen, we talked about this last week with the patterns uh, and we had that sell off. Here it was blue professional bars, exhaustion buy, bearish divergence flush, bang, we sold off. We did sell off initially at the beginning of last week, but then we came back up, trapped a lot of people here above that last move, and there the big pro bars come in. They came in here and they came in here uh, to sell it down. We've got weakness there, a little bit of a test back up with amateur up bars under the lip here, but we're falling off. We've got a um, stair step trade, blue professional bars at the end of the week. So let's go see uh, if we test down into 64s with exhaustion sell and more blue professional bars coming in at those lows to catch the Japanese yen. So still in the downtrend on the Japanese yen. 10 years, 10 years fussing around all week. I was talking about last week saying it was really junky and difficult to play this. The blue professional bars are not coming in the right place in order to bottom this. And as I look at this, there's not a lot. Yeah, trying down here uh, to hold it. Rambo patterns, blue professional bars. Let's see, we had some strength at the end of the week. Blue professional bars, a bit of a stair step trade there. So let's see if that holds for 10 years. And gold, gold had a really nice week. So this is a nice little setup. Exhaustion sell, bullish divergence, blue professional bars on the low down here. And then we test, 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 amateur down bars, testing, bang, 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 break into an uptrend uh, beginning of the week and it just races away. What is that, 150 uh, bucks or so to the upside. That was really nice. Just following it up all the way. Exhaustion sell, but we're still up at uh, 27.18. We've had no exhaustion buy, only one or two blue professional bars at the highs there. So that was a super nice setup for gold. Silver didn't quite cooperate in the same way. We didn't have exhaustion sell down here. And the blue professional bars, the big pro bars, coming in at the highs. It's not as convincing, not as nice a pattern as uh, gold. But if gold continues to rally, the silver will follow along, I imagine. And Bitcoin. Bitcoin had a heck of a week. We got up to just shy of uh, $100,000, 99.86, and we're weakening over the weekend. But it's not unusual that we're weakening because look at here into these highs. Big pro bars coming in, bang, bang, to uh, 
bites of the uh, apple here. Exhaustion buy, bearish divergence, exhaustion buy at those highs, and all of a sudden we break through the trailing stop and we're into downtrends with the background in grey. Amateur up bars weak. We bounce off a Rambo pan. Amateur up bars weak, and we've come back down. We're below 98,000 as, as I talk. So that's interesting that it topped out under that psychological important level at 100,000, but it's nice to be talking about 100,000s on Bitcoin. That is pretty pretty cool. Crude. Crude had a nice week. Exhaustion sell, bullish divergence, a bullish divergence, so exhaustion sell. Again, blue professional down bars here and one here, and we've rallied from there. But at the end of this week, we've got big pro bars coming in here. So let's see. No exhaustion buy, though, at this point. So if, we'll see if that rally in uh, crude continues. Natural gas. Now, natural gas had a nice run at the beginning of this week. We had exhaustion sell, bullish divergence flush, big pro bars <coughs> step in. Then we got a Rambo pattern right at the lows down here at 290. And we uh, set off on the way up. We had signs of a strength here. And then we had a little bit of weakness, signs of strength coming again. Bang, bang, bang to these highs. Some blue professional bars, but no exhaustion buy at that point. And then the blue professional bars, big pro bars have stepped in here with exhaustion sell bullish divergence, so 325 level. So it's going to be super key to see if that holds going forward. And it is cyclical support here on the highest time frame. A better sine wave, we've got a uh, big things happen at triple signal here. We need to get back above uh, 333 here for that to signal that we're in an uptrend on natural gas. But that's interesting to see if that level holds. And copper, so copper we talked about last week, I think, with the daily chart. I said I wasn't keen on copper because of the long-term charts. Yes, we bounced off these lows down here at $4, but we bounced into trouble. Blue professional up bars, big pro bars. Here again, another big pro bar here. And it's almost like we're rolling over at that point. Exhaustion buy, bearish divergence, flush. That uptrend ran out of puff pretty quickly. Signs of weakness come in, break into a downtrend here on uh, copper. So copper not looking too good. And if you look at the higher time frame chart, that's why. Resistance comes in on the highest time frame. End of trends go off, bang, bang, bang. Sign of weakness, and we're in a downtrend on copper. And then lastly, the ags. We've got corn. Had a little bit of a bounce from last week. So there's a setup, exhaustion sell, bullish divergence, blue professional bars, break into an uptrend, backgrounds in red. But we run into trouble. It's all being led by the amateurs at that point. We weakened from there. So let's see if we've come back down to this level where, first of all, they bought it at the end of last week, beginning of this week. And that's we're back into those lows. So let's see if that level holds. Blue professional bars come in possibly cyclically. Yeah, we've got to run this thing out. So we've got resistance on the highest time frame. We've got to find support in the highest time frame before corn finds that level and maybe bounces from there. Soybeans. Now, I was looking at this trade for Thursday, Friday. This was looking good into the lows down here. Big pro bars come in at uh, 975. Exhaustion sell, bullish divergence. We start breaking above the trailing stop, but the background's not turned to red yet. So that's what I've been looking for on soybeans, and that is because on better sine wave, we've not turned into an uptrend yet. So soybeans is looking interesting this week. And lastly, wheat. So last week, we had all these big pro bars come in here. We finally break back above those and into a little bit of strength, but then blue professional bars come in. But we're coming back down into that, that whole area where we had big pro bars previously, exhaustion sell. No uh, blue professional bars yet. So let us see if that area holds. And again, it's terms of timing. The cyclical resistance is coming on the highest time frame. We've probably got to play this out to cyclical support on that highest time frame and see if that whole level uh, starts to hold and we break into an uptrend on wheat. So it'll be interesting this week to see if the E-mini continues to rally. We've got that seasonal wind behind us, so hopefully that'll continue to rally. And let's see how far Bitcoin dips down. We've got profit takers because of the uh, 100,000 level come in. Let's see how uh, severe that uh, little drop off on the Bitcoin is going to be. We've got some other charts starting to line up, but they haven't uh, triggered quite yet. It'll be interesting to see how they set up this week. So this week's also going to be a shortened trading because of Thanksgiving. So the Wednesday is going to be light, Thursday's markets will be shut, and then Friday is going to be super light. So really only two days trading to go. But we can still have quite big moves on the light traded days. It's possible to move those markets around pretty substantially, even though the volumes are going to be light. So if your trading is going well, I'm looking forward to next week.